Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the S Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week. And a look forward to what might happen in the next week. Hopefully, lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout the show. Well, this was a choppier holiday-shortened week this week, uh, and the markets were narrowly mixed. Uh, a severe reversal came uh, on Tuesday uh, as the markets opened higher, but then all of a sudden the tech stocks getting sold pretty hard. And then on Wednesday we saw the markets reversed back up uh, as good news came out of Apple, of what they're going to do with uh, the windfall from the change in the tax plan. Uh, then we have this fight over uh, immigration and DACA and health insurance for children and the debt ceiling going on. And uh, the market uh, is still uh, exceptionally strong as it faces all of that. As the government gets closer to a shutdown as it runs out of money uh, on Friday, January 19th, the House passed a continuing resolution uh, to fund the uh, the government for a very short few days in here uh, so that they could keep talking, but now the Senate looks like they're going to block that. We're waiting for that information to come right now, so you're probably going to hear a lot more of it uh, after uh, this show, and uh, we'll see if the market is going to react in some way. We keep hearing this uh, out of uh, the congressman. Uh, let's just fund the government. Um, it's a joke, really, and I think that John Maynard Keynes would be rolling in his grave as uh, he even believed that in times of uh, government uh, uh, in kind of times of economic growth, that uh, the government should be running a, a surplus. It's a joke, really, as we look at that. Uh, and it's not about any of those policy issues that they're talking about, really. And it's about both sides uh, putting the government in U.S. the U.S. government in massive debt. Uh, eventually, the noose is going to tighten around uh, the neck uh, uh, as uh, they shut it down for a little while, and then they'll pass some bill to push the push it out for a few more months. More can kicking, uh, and they'll borrow more money essentially uh, in order to fund the government. That's what they're they're doing, they're borrowing money from China, really, uh, as uh, China now has $1.2 trillion in U.S. government debt on their books, and they have recently been threatening about uh, not buying any more U.S. debt, and a China rating agency, which nobody gives much credit to, has lowered uh, the U.S. debt rating. Um, that might be in prep in the way they're going to fight over a trade war, and if they start um, going through this uh, lesser, buying lesser U.S. debt or not at all, where well, there's going to be a real problem. That might fuel a, the, the next bear market, and maybe that's why we're seeing a decline in the dollar uh, and uh, we're seeing interest rates uh, moving up here uh, to levels we haven't seen in a few years uh, as there's some sign that if the dollar collapses, then the Fed might have to protect by raising interest rates much faster. So if China pulls something like that, and it's not that far out of the realm of possibility, uh, there could be a, a lot of disruption in the markets. And believe me, if the dollar starts to collapse, it's going to change the direction uh, that the Fed is taking uh, pretty uh, quickly. They'll be raising rates a lot faster to protect uh, the dollar if that happens. And that could happen if China does actually stop buying the U.S. debt. There's a lot of talk about the fact that, well, if China did that, well, then they'd be just hurting themselves because of all the product we buy out of China. But we never know what's going to happen uh, in a crazy situation. We've been in a crazy situation already here, so uh, that could happen, and uh, we're going to be watching 
for the possibility. Let's take a look at our 60 minute chart of the S&P 500 as we look at what happened in the last week. The gray area being the uh, area of the overnight trading and the uh, white area being the area of the trading during the regular trading session. Uh, we didn't have uh, much going on uh, on Martin Luther King Day on Monday. You can see the, the, the futures were open, the, the markets were closed, and they basically moved sideways. There was a big drop in the dollar and, and, and a big pop in the euro right there. And uh, you could see it did kind of give us a little move down there overnight, but nothing really there. Uh, some news that came out, and Bitcoin was in the news a lot this week, is South Korea and China uh, really cracked down. We'll call it the crypto crackdown, and Bitcoin plunges way more than 20% at the worst uh, level during the week. And that China rating agency reduced a U.S. debt. You got a little blip on the downside here, but not much. And the NASDAQ... Um, on Tuesday uh, jumped up early in the day as the Dow crossed 26,000 and the dollar rebounded. Copper had a big drop overnight uh, there. And what happened was, as you can see, that there was a big reversal here. Uh, and uh, the some news out here that uh, the, the, the U.S. debt that came out of Deutsche Bank, the amount of it, uh, which is uh, the U.S. will issue in the next year, is $1 trillion. And here we're talking more about big debt coming out. And that's really the big issue that we're going to be facing in here. And Deutsche Bank says that that could really cripple the world equity markets. And markets reversed, uh, and you got this big selling coming in in the NASDAQ that really Really led the market to the downside. You can see about a 35 point decline in here in the S&P 500 and then it rebounded late in the day. But then uh, we got a rally back overnight in here. Bitcoin, by the way, plunged overnight to uh, under 9,400, close to 93, and then rebounded to uh, close to 12,000. So it had this massive 35 percent move. Uh, and uh, here on Wednesday, the techs led the rebound back. The news was absolutely Apple, Apple uh, says that they're going to contribute $350 billion to the U.S. economy over the next five years. Apple rallies three points and really leads that NASDAQ back. They're going to repatriate um, their uh, a good portion of their money. They know that they have a $38 billion tax liability, so that's going to go to the government. They're going to build a U.S. Uh, campus here, another one, hire 20,000 workers and give $2,500 in uh, restricted stock uh, to employees. So that got the market rallying back in a big way. And you could see that that made the high of the week here. Uh, and it's been chopping around ever since. Uh, on Thursday, jobless claims were near a 45-year low as uh, the bond market saw that and fell a full point. Bonds are certainly weak in here, as is the dollar. Uh, and uh, that uh, debt ceiling problem uh, was looming there. So we got a choppy day here on Thursday. Uh, over After the close on Thursday, IBM earnings came out. They beat, but margins were weaker, so IBM moved to the downside side that led the Dow down. Dow is down on Friday, even though the stock, the uh, S&P is, is higher. So we have a, um, a mixed market here on Friday. Uh, the House passed that uh, debt ceiling, that CR, and that's uh, we're still waiting for the Senate uh, here late on Friday. You can see we are have only about an hour and a half to go here on Friday as I'm recording this, and we're still waiting for news uh, out of the Senate. Uh, as far as uh, that um, goes, the uh, we'll probably get some sense around that uh, later on in the day here on Friday because they're going to run out of money, and the word is that. Uh, Schumer has gone to the White House and he's going to try to uh, reopen negotiations, uh, but I don't think that they're going to get anywhere. And there's a pretty good odds that uh, there's going to be a government shutdown, at least for a short period of time. And then, as I said, the squeeze will be on and the negative press will be there. And then, uh, as they always do, they'll figure out some way to kick the can down the road, not solve the issues, government debt growing, and uh, then the 
uh, potential for the debt bomb down the road, which is now 20.6 something trillion dollars exploding. You know what uh, the uh, uh, CBO projection is uh, for debt uh, over the next 10 years? Well, if you add the 1.5 trillion dollars that this tax plan uh, is uh, going to add to the government debt over the next 10 years to the $9.2 trillion already expected for the debt to grow, you're going to be in 10 years, in 2026, uh, at a $32 trillion debt. And the government has to sell all those bonds, and China's already saying they don't want to buy them. What do you think is going to happen? Well, sometime down the road in here, and it may, may, may not be may not be that too far that that bomb is going to explode and we're going to see markets moving in some severe way. That's the opening and we're going to be right back with uh, our look at the best and worst stocks for the week. All right, for the best stocks of the week, you know, surprisingly, you know, market, uh, you know, still firm this week, but we're just in kind of this early earnings period, and we didn't get that many big movers for the week, uh, especially on the upside. The biggest mover for the week was Win. Win is a stock that we've been positive on. <clears throat> We're going to show you, uh, uh, give you a look here at our cyclical analysis. And if you like these charts uh, that you're seeing here, um, you can have them on the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, TD Ameritrade, that's our preferred broker, and we do all of our work on their Thinkorswim platform which is just phenomenal. Uh, it gives me a great ability to do this type of cyclical analysis on there. And our level four members get these charts uh, for their platform, uh, TOS platform, think or swim, uh, every single week. So uh, you want to get these, we'll offer you a special uh, half price for one month. You'll be able to get this and all of our uh, uh, rankings and trade setups, uh, which is our level three membership and all of our library of 250 plus videos plus four new videos every single week you can have all of that for a half price 6450 just write me an email slim at asslim.com i'll send you a special link for that so uh, hopefully uh you like what you see here and you will see uh what we do as you look at this chart of win resort here's win right there and you can see in here that this is a weekly chart the core of our cycle work is on weekly charts though we do weekly and daily and you can see here these are the uh what we call ideal cycles the brackets in here and uh that's a, a major cycle that we're looking at right there and the dotted line is a minor cycle when you see a dotted line you know we've done some sort of a revision in there so there's a little message to our subscribers Subscribers, and you could see the massively bullish situation in here. We watched this big, massive diamond form right there, and then once it broke out over here, we called that. We turned bullish with the stock at around 105. It's now at 178, and you can see these positive cycle formations that we call them right in here, and then turning up again. So this is only, as you can see, two weeks into that, into that advance. The new advance off of that low, that's pretty early. We had projected it to get up to uh, about 175 or higher. Now the projection is going to go higher. We're looking at 189 as a reasonable level for it to get up to that FIB extension level. Uh, when uh, Morgan Stanley comes out and says it's their top, on their list of top picks for 2018, uh, it's up 9% plus on the week in a super powerful move and we think there is more to come uh, when you look at that. The next stock we're going to look at is in the retail category. Uh, Lowe's, they're the Home Depot competitor. And this you can see in here is another super powerful uh, pattern in here. Generally, when you get into declining cycles, and you can see this right over here and this right over here, and right over here and here. When you get into those periods where you're supposed to get declines, well, when it's pretty bullish, you get small declines like you had right over here. 
and almost no decline right over here. We call that a swamping. In other words, the upward pressure is so strong, it doesn't even allow a correction to come, and it explodes on the upside. There's a report that there's an activist investor that took a big stake here in uh, Lowe's, and that's why it got a big pop, up about 8% on the week. And uh, this is one we did not really call because we didn't think it would be uh, as strong a competitor to Home Depot, but it really has been. And you can see when it broke out above this cycle peak resistance right over there, man, it was a runaway after that. Uh, and uh, that came at around 87 and it's now gotten up to 105. This is pretty extensive. So, you know, we got to think that uh, a stock like this is going to pull back. Uh, floor gets a big move in here, FLR. This is another one of these incredibly strong cyclical patterns. 7% on the week is analyst upgrade. Uh, the analysts believe that they're going to benefit from the energy sector spending that is likely to come based on the higher oil uh, price. So uh, you can see in here, this is an incredible situation also. Why is that? Well, you can see that each of these uh, corrective periods right in here brought pretty good declines and then when you got this cycle break it declined exactly down to where that low was due right in here but look at this no correction whatsoever to be seen in here we're going to look for a week or two minor pullback and then more to the upside and their floor is just absolutely a dynamic looking stock in there <clears throat> the next one we're going to look at is united healthcare unh which gets a big upside move here on an analyst upgrade. There you can see the incredible thing that we're looking at. When you see green yellow on our charts and no color red, you know it's been in an incredible upside move where the corrections have been minor like this. And each of those coming, well, pretty much right on time, you can see the rhythmic motion, which each of these cycles being very similar in length, and here again, almost no decline or none. So we're looking for just a little bit of a pullback in here and then move again. A very strong cyclical pattern as we look at that. So these stocks that are strong are remaining strong. They're all in really powerful momentum on the upside. Take a look here at KLAC, up 7% on the week. This is an extraordinarily bullish situation when you look at this pattern. Really like this. Let's take a closer look right here so you will understand what we're looking at. Here you could see that what happened was, was that, well, this was a normal cycle, normal bullish cycle configured on the upside. This one bottomed about, well, we'll call it three or four weeks early. And when you get that, that's very anxious buyers coming in here. Our target is about 127 on this stock as KLA 10 core in the semiconductor material category is also very bullish. Uh, no news on this uh, I, that I could see but looking uh, really strong. And the last one we're gonna look at in the uh, on the uh, positive side is Best Buy. This is getting crazy. I mean, we had it as, as in this positive green zone. It's really, again, a very good chart. We're looking for this period right here in March to be the bottom of a correction. You could see that. So we're looking for it to turn over and correct. This one gives you some decent corrections, as you could see in each of these periods here. So we're going to look for this to roll over and then correct and get into a buy area here and then move up again. So uh, really strong. We see that uh, it has been, uh, we've seen an increase or in the estimates for 2019. Actually, a PE, a forward PE of about 15 is pretty rich on this stock. So, of course, they really did a good job of becoming an online seller, and this is another look at a very bullish pattern. So there you go, six stocks that we looked at in here, all of them with super bullish patterns, and that's supportive of the fact that the stock market is not likely to give uh, a big top in here yet. We're looking for that to come uh, sometime later in the winter and then a pretty sizable correction into the spring. Uh, but right now we have, well, a lot of patterns that you can see there that are looking like they're not ready to top yet. And a good powerful look at good stocks right there, six of them. Let's take a look at the worst of the week and you'll see maybe some different pictures in here. Here we go.
So for the worst of the week, we're going to start out by looking in the tech tech category at ADTRAN, A-D-T-N. This is uh, in our universe of 320 stocks in the information technology category. Not when we look at that well, that often, but this stock actually turned bearish some months ago and then had, well, a big decline. You can see here that uh, it has been projecting to a low well, basically right now in the next week. So we're going to look for a turnaround in here, but it's bad. I mean, really bad when you look at this. The real breakdown came when it get down under this level. So you can see in here the cycle rhythms. Uh, the cycles bottom pretty much where they're supposed to. In other words, you get rising phases and declining phases and rising and declining. This one was a bullish configuration, said we're going to go to a new high, and it did so. But then it broke below that low, and that was trouble. And you could see these big moves on the downside in there uh, in Adtran. Really a uh, pretty ugly looking stock in there. But it's within a week or two of when we expect the bottom to come. Their earnings uh, beat, but their guidance was not good. It was flat. Uh, the street was hoping for something better. It's down 15% on the week. And we do think that the worst of this uh, decline now is behind it, but we'll get a rally that will be a failing rally and then get ready to move. A little quick look in here as we look at the daily chart. And I just want to give you a little indication of the momentum changes in here as uh, it fails here at the 89 day moving average gives you this negative momentum signal right over here which called this big decline this is the slim ribbon which is just a fantastic momentum indicator you got to put that one on your charts for sure because it really catches all of the big moves so I uh, encourage you to put that on. So here's Adtran, uh, a beat on earnings, but disappointment and everything else, and down 15% on the week. Uh, in the category of energy, uh, Noble Corp in here, it moved up. Now, we had a positive situation form in here in uh, this oil service or driller uh, stock, and the, building this base, this positive cycle that you could see right here, it said it was going to go up, and then when it ran above this level, it exploded up to the resistance zone. Now, you could see it turn around right over here and move to the downside. They had a note offering, and uh, that pretty much stopped it at that level. We thought it could get up over here to about 640 or so, uh, but now it looks more like the bottom of the resistance is the problem at about 577. It might try to rally again a little bit, but we don't like it now that it's failed at that lower resistance level, and uh, we would be a seller in there. We've been really bearish in Under Armour. It's been plunging, and we've had uh, some analysts downgrade this now. Uh, you can see this downward pattern in here uh, as we look at these consistent negative cyclical patterns. Now it might be building a base in here. You can see negative cycle right here. So here's your cycles right here. You can see that. And this is a negative. In other words, it closed lower. It made a lower high, lower low, lower high. This one kind of a sideways cycle and then lower low again. So it, it failed at this resistance level. We're kind of looking for all the way out till late March before this base is built. We'll see if it can hold up in here and not break that 1140 low. It probably won't, and that'll be a base built in here. and That'll make it a buy in March, but it really doesn't make it a buy right now. We think that resistance zone is going to be a problem. We have followed solar stocks pretty closely in here, and solar stocks had a bad week in here. Uh, as uh, we saw Sun Power pull down 8%, uh, Canadian Solar down 7%, First Solar down about 7%. Also, let's take a look at these patterns in here. SPWR, I know that there's a lot of people following this stock. This little stock gives you uh, a lot of good cycle uh, theory lessons in here, and this is on my list of best stocks for the year. So you can tell that, well, if it's on my list of best stocks for the year, I have a reason to like it. Actually, I think the solar industry is going to continue to benefit moving forward. We have a huge move uh, in uh, uh, the electric cars. 
there's going to be huge demand for figuring out how to get that electricity. And uh, I think that the solar industry is going to do fantastically well as uh, solar panel costs have really come down. So we're going to see, I, I think, a very good period coming out later in the year in there. Now, again, you can see failing at those intermediate resistance zones. So we're really bullish on it. We think that the next month or month and a half could see some further consolidation in here. But then again, looking at March, we think that this is going to be a better period for it right there. So uh, maybe just a month or so of pulling back in here dancing around, but then we think it's going to be moving to the upside again. CSIQ, uh, a little different uh, pattern in here, a little different situation. And uh, this one is getting to the point where we think it's going to bottom very soon. You could see in here, uh, as I trace out this upward <coughs> looking uh, pattern, here's your base in here. Notice that this cycle here <coughs> and this cycle here creates an inverted head and shoulders and then a breakout and then a new uptrend. So we're looking for this pattern in here to bottom right basically at this time and then turn up again. We think that uh, Canadian solar is a buy right now. First solar pulls back, uh, FSLR, and you can see in here that, well, this one is really early to be topping. And, and it's interesting that uh, all three of these solar stocks have slightly different patterns. So we're looking for CSIQ to bottom. This one looked like it bottomed already and is getting a pretty big pullback as analysts downgraded it this week. And that's probably what's weighing on the whole group. We like it. We think it's going to reverse back up and head towards the $80 number. Uh, just a word of caution. You see this cycle low support. We have that information in there for our subscribers. And uh, that says that there is a key number. If it happens to break that level at 6690, then the whole picture will change. And we'll get into a m much longer corrective period. So we're watching 6690. It's still, you know, $3.30 from there. And it can get rescued by turning to the upside again. So uh, that's a look at the solar stocks. Ford Motors had a bad week. Uh, they have uh, guided lower and saying that uh, the turnaround's not here yet. It might take getting through. 2018. Look at that. Okay, so you can see the pattern in there. That looks like uh, it's getting near a cycle bottom, but you've had this big break in here. You can see on this daily chart right in here, this dark cloud cover right there that called it. It now moves down. We've got a downward turn in the slim ribbon, which says negative momentum now in hand. Here's where the slim ribbon turned positive. With the stock here around 12 and a half, it rallied all the way up here to about 13 and a half. Remember, there's not a lot of volatility in here. And now we have this downward turn on their weak guidance. And that looks like, uh, based on this, that it goes down into uh, this wave into the mid-February period right there. And that's when we would look for this bottom right over here. We This looks like it would be a couple uh, weeks away, but in the daily chart says it might be actually three or four weeks away before this bottom is in place. So uh, th this uh, is, is not good news and a not good pattern. So you can see our projection is that once this bottom comes in place, it rallies, but it doesn't get that far and then it turns down again. That's really what this kind of pattern is suggestive of. KB Home down about 8% also. Uh, and you can see right in here this uh, pattern that it looks like it turned over. But this is an extremely positive pattern also. So you get this uh, period in here where it's supposed to correct and it doesn't correct at all and then accelerates to the upside. Even if KB Home, which reported two weeks ago with great earnings, even if that um, has this kind of a pattern, we would expect it to turn up again one more time, uh, at least and get back uh, over that 38, maybe to 39 area uh, one more time. It's a little premature to uh, get any kind of a real downturn in here, so we think it's actually a buy. And uh, this is uh, when when you look in here at KB Home. <clears throat> 
it really looks like uh, their um, PE on future earnings looked pretty low. I mean, they're right now they're reporting $1.50 for this year. The projected is $3 or over $3. So um, that makes the uh, a PE uh, forward PE at about 11 and that could bring more buyers in. So we don't actually think that this is going to be the top in here, but you know maybe that 39 area is a top. We'll look forward to give uh, one more shot to the upside in there. Uh, last stock we're going to look at is Alcoa AA. And you can see in here, well, this turned down, and we're concerned about this one. Um, the reason is that well, uh, their earnings uh, missed, and uh, analysts upgraded the stock and said it's temporary. We don't really think that this is a very good pattern looking at this at all. Uh, as it turns down from these FIB projections, you see that target zone in there uh, that comes off of these past uh, cyclical patterns, and it makes it up there and then rejects. You can see in here on the daily pattern right in here, this downside gap. Now, I want you to note that the slim ribbon turns positive over here at about 47, and it rallies up to 57. So it was a fantastic signal, but this downside gap right over there is worrisome. And the fact that this declining period goes out in here for another well, week and a half says to me that there's a pretty good chance that we're going to lose the upward momentum in here and that wouldn't be good if that happened. So I think Alcoa has made a peak, and we're going to look for it to trade down here to about close to 49 in that intermediate support zone right over there uh, out into the springtime. So we think a top is in place in here uh, in Alcoa, not a very good pattern uh, when you look at that, simply because it looks like the right place and the right time for Alcoa to be topping. And uh, with uh, that earnings miss, I think the analyst that said it's okay and upgraded it based on the earnings report, I think they're going to be wrong. IBM uh, is a stock that we have liked uh, as our best uh, on our list of best stocks for the year. It surged like 10% and then uh, gave back uh, a pretty good chunk as it reported its earnings this week uh, on, and uh, fell about 3.5% after it reported earnings. This is the first time that uh, they've had a revenue beat since uh, like 2012. Uh, it's uh, uh, been uh, three or four years, and it's a, they had an earnings beat. The problem was was that margins came in weaker, like uh, 140 basis points, and that scared analysts. So uh, we have a uh, uh, a island top on the daily chart. You can go take a look at that, which means that I kind of think it's top for now. We're going to look at a correction maybe into February, but I still think it's going to be one of the best stocks for the year. IBM. We're going to be right back as we look at our short-term view for the coming week. All right, short-term view for the coming week. Uh, before I get into the short-term view, just a little announcement. On Tuesday morning, 8.15 Eastern Time, uh, I'm going to be uh, a guest on Benzinga's pre-market prep show. So uh, go uh, to the internet, look up pre -mar Benzinga pre-market prep, and I'll be interviewed on there. I was on there once before. It was a ton of fun. Uh, and uh, the guys on there are great. And I'm sure we're going to be talking about markets and history and uh, where we think things are going to go. So check into it. Uh, Benzinga pre-market prep show this Tuesday, uh, and that will be at 8.15 Eastern Time. All right, so we're going to look at our short-term view for the coming week uh, as uh, we take a look at what I said last week and what we think is going to happen in the next week. Again, momentum has been king, really. Uh, it's been uh, what has been driving markets and continue to be so. As far as momentum and as far as the direction and, and areas that we thought that markets would move to or reverse from, we were a solid 80% this week. This was a great one. Uh, we got light crude, uh, the dollar, euro, gold, silver, the bond market, all of those very close to correct. Uh, and uh, what, where we missed uh, was the stock market, which we thought would have a down week. Uh, and uh, basically, it's uh, not a down week, but uh, a mixed week that we had uh, in the market. So uh, the... Uh, uh, 
the important thing in here, of course, is uh, what we're going to look at for the coming week. So uh, let's take a look as we look at the uh, short-term view of the coming week. We're going to look at um, daily charts uh, which have our cycle analysis on it and momentum analysis and that will give you a good sense for what we see here as the condition of the markets uh, as we look at them and uh, we'll take a look as we look first at light crude. I mentioned earlier in the show in light crude that uh, there was a report out that said that there was an expectation that the oil shale producers were going to um, be uh, well, producing a lot more oil uh, in this uh, coming uh, period because the oil price has gotten up there and uh, that is a, a condition that we think is going to be uh, uh, keeping a lid on the price of oil uh, moving forward in here. Uh, here's a, a look at the short-term view, the daily chart, and uh, get a little closer a peek in here for you to see them. And uh, we thought that it would be rolling over coming down this week. We thought that the projection would be that it would come down uh, in basically uh, another week or so to test that 61 level. You could see that right over there. And we, we still think that that's going to happen. We see still 61. Uh, and uh, momentum in here is still strong. Again, so you can focus on that slim ribbon right in there that is moving up in a positive way. Uh, the slim ribbon colors the volume bars in here, so that also shows shows you that they are green and they've been basically positive this whole period that we're looking at in here. So uh, a, a good strong momentum in there and that's keeping the move from being very strong to the downside. That's why we're only looking for a pullback in here to the 61 level at kind of the worst level before it then turns up again and probably test that 63, 64 area <clears throat> again. So we're looking for a dip for a week and then start to move uh, up in there. Last week we talked about natural gas and uh, turning into a much stronger pattern and the pattern is even getting stronger. So we're looking for natural gas to still make some upside ground. For the week, you know, the stock market basically, uh, we saw the major indexes move up uh, less than a, a percentage point, and uh, we uh, saw the Russell actually move uh, just uh, uh, about to unchanged level as it had a recovery uh, here on Friday. Uh, so uh, a, a interesting uh, week as uh, light crude here does very little. Uh, as far as the uh, next thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at the dollar, which is dollar sign DXY, and uh, take a look here, and you can see, well, we looked for the dollar to move to the downside, and here we thought that upticks would fail, and uh, as a matter of fact, in this holiday shortened week, just these last four bars in here, every time it tried to tick up, it did fail. So where we're getting right now is this minor upside week in here. Uh, and uh, that's likely to come. You can see that, picturing it going up in here for a little bit and then turning down again. We kind of think this period in here in February uh, uh, is going to be a tell. We'll we see if it kind of can not give a lot of ground. We'll see that if we get this rally and then pull back. So we're looking for, in the dollar, uh, kind of an upward turn, a minor up week that stalls in the slim ribbons. You can see them coming down. Uh, and then uh, really not being able to make a lot of ground. The inverse of that is the euro currency, which is about 56% uh, inverse weighting to the dollar index. And uh, you can see that right in here, <clears throat> that uh, it's gotten into this area right over here of the FIB extensions and kind of stalled. We thought that any time a dip would be a buy, and we're getting that in here. Uh, for the euro currency, we're kind of looking for just some sideways chop and then a minor dip. So we don't think that there's going to be much to the downside. Momentum still very strong in there, as you can see. And uh, just uh, we're going to call it a, a, a chop with just a minor dip. And again, we'd be buying downside uh, dips just as we'd be selling the upside in the dollar. As far as the gold market goes, forward slash GC. Gold has a small down week in here, down oh, about less than $5 for the week uh, as it comes back here on Friday. 
and uh, we're looking at uh, this pattern which let me just get this down a little bit so that you can see right over here you see this uh, evening star pattern that formed in there that's uh, highlighted in pink um, that uh, sits right on that 78.6% uh, fib it gives us some kind of a sense that we're kind of stalling in here uh, momentum is still very strong. We're expecting that we're going to get just a minor pullback in here as the dollar then gets a little bit of a bounce. So there's little short-term signs of a little top in here, and uh, that dollar pop that we expect will probably cause uh, a dip in here. Uh, small down week is what we're going to look for. We're going to look at a test of around this 1320 area, around this slim ribbon right in here, and not much. We're not looking for a lot of downside in here just a little minor corrective period in there. If it breaks 1308, this is this line right over here, that changes things and it will then turn negative. We don't expect that to happen, but we want to look at that as a possibility. Forge less SI, the silver market, also putting on a down week in here and uh, that uh, is important level right over there at about 1680 if it breaks that then our projection of a uh, 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 being able to hold in here and move up is going to be a little bit of a cautionary signal so we're going to call again a small choppy week for the silver market also not a lot in there and you know a chance that it's going to try to get just a little bit higher and then not be able to make much ground this we call a long-legged doji right there and when you get that you're probably freezing the market at that point so we kind of think we're going to be stuck you can see the low is right over here and the high is right over here 1745 and it's probably calling the range in there uh, for the silver market don't want to see it break 1680 as far as the bond market goes well you know we thought that it would try to have an up week and then fail and that's well exactly what happened in fact the 30 years got exactly into our zone and moved down you couldn't get much of a rally in the 10 year it tried to rally here on Tuesday but then came down now we have this new declining resistance zone right over there that uh, comes in this area of about 122.19 to 122.25 I don't really think it's going to do much better in a bounce than that and this still looks to us like it's going to be uh, a downward week a momentum negative very significantly in here when I switch this over to the bond uh, to the 30 year bonds you can see in here that it got exactly into our sell zone we had talked about it getting into 150.20 to 151.04 it got up to 151.07 and then failed immediately and uh, that sell zone proved to be actually fantastic so here's your new minor resistance zone down over here uh, 149.20 150.08 we could get a little bounce in here, but we don't think it's going to go far, and we're still looking for this negative momentum to bring any rally that comes up to, to fail. Uh, and so that's the, the new zone that we think it's going to fail in, and this last one last week was uh, just great. So the 30-year bond market gets down uh, about 1.5 points for the week, and 10-year notes uh, get up to uh, 2.64 which is the highest uh, point that we have seen them since 2014. So uh, yields are really starting to move on the upside as we see that. So I actually think we're going to see yields, uh, as I said in my year-end show, over 3% uh, in, in this year, and maybe significantly over if the dollar collapses, because the Fed will act to keep that dollar from collapsing because that will cause inflation to go way beyond what their target is, and we're pretty close to their target range uh, right now. So things could change if we see uh, interest rates start to move up in a much faster way, at least the market's doing so. Let's take a look as we look at the S&P 500 SPX, which we thought would be uh, moving to the downside. Now, it, it basically has been just barely creeping up uh, despite the fact that it had a decline uh, over 
the um, just over Tuesday, uh, which was a pretty sizable one. You can see that one right there as it uh, made this dark cloud cover right there. But it's all we did was get a stall in the market with the peak uh, here on Tuesday and the peak here on Friday uh, pretty much very close to, uh, to the same 2807 number. We're look. We were last week. We said we were looking for the next two weeks to bring it down over here uh, to the uh, rising support level. That level has now moved up just a touch to the 2753 level. So we're looking for the next week to come down to that 2753. As you see these green dash lines or the cycles that we're looking at right now. There's an older dotted blue line right over there that's also pointing to a similar period. That uh, time period we're looking for right now is the 25th to the 28th of January as that corrective low period. So we're looking for a down week. Momentum still strong and you could see the bottom of the slim ribbon coming into that zone right there. So we could easily get down into that rising support zone without doing any damage to this upward trend and then move up again sharply. That wouldn't be much of a decline when we're looking at that to that level. It wouldn't be even 2%. So um, we have that expectation and maybe the uh, issue around the debt ceiling will be some stimulus for that. But uh, we think we're going to get down to that level uh, between the 25th and 28th of January, uh, a minor decline. When I look at the NASDAQ uh, NDX, you can see in here a similar uh, lined up cyclical period in here as uh, it has uh, moved up a little bit uh, beyond that Tuesday high just by a couple points. This rising support zone right over here takes you down to uh, around 66 uh, 70 area right there. That's what we expect also in that period of January 25th to 28th. So we're looking for it to roll over in the next week and pull down. Um, every single time we have said anything like that, the market has seemed to extend for longer periods of time. But you can see right now when you look at these cycles, the length of the advance here and the length of the advance here is pretty similar to the length of the advance here. In fact, we've gotten up a little bit longer right now. So um, you see a four or five day decline here, a four or five day, six day decline here. That's what we think we're getting into right now. So we think the NASDAQ is getting ready to pull down. I actually don't really think that this news uh, that we have in Apple that we've had uh, the NASDAQ moving up is uh, all that good for the stock market actually or for stocks yeah it's a good sign uh, as apple is uh, getting uh, a lot of that money back in the country uh, and uh, is giving money to their employees and building a campus and all that's you know pretty good for the economy right but is it really good for apple um, maybe they can use that money uh, for some acquisitions down the road but uh, the stock being up where it's at right now, uh, based on that news, I don't get that. I think Apple's going to help the stock market move uh, back to the downside uh, for a modest recovery, a modest decline or correction, uh, which is just going to be probably in the next week or week and a half less than 2% to the downside before they start moving up again. So uh, that's a look at the stock market, which uh, just uh, basically a slightly up on the week, and uh, we're going to um, look for some small correction. That is it. Uh, make sure that you send me a request for that link, uh, slim at slim.com for our level four special. And don't miss me uh, on Benzinga uh, in the morning on Tuesday, 8.15 Eastern time on their pre-market prep show. I think it's going to be fun. That's it for this week. Be careful because it is so crazy out there. And we're always wishing you great trading. Well, I'm going to send